Good morning, everybody. Today is a bit of a different video. Instead of cooking, I'm going to totally clear out, reorganize, refill, rejig my spice drawer. So that will enable you to kind of see what spices I use regularly, um, which ones I don't really use. I have a drawer of spices that I'm gonna show you in a second, and then I've got this cabinet of overfill. I have a lot of spices. As you know, I love a good spice. I feel like you can do so many different things with the most basic ingredients if you have a wide array of spices, especially if they're fresh spices. Spices do go bad. They dry out, they can go rancid, they can become stale, um, packaged, Pepper is the worst for this, in my opinion, and cinnamon. I think they're both really terrible if they're not fresh. They're just so dull and flavorless and lackluster. And who wants lackluster cinnamon and pepper? So that is ground pepper, by the way. Freshly grind your pepper. It'll make a huge difference. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy this bit of a different angle, I'm like squoze right into the uh, corner of my kitchen, but I think it'll be fun. And yeah, let's get right into it. So um, the disaster that you see here is <laughs> all of the spices that I had either in here or in my pantry. A lot of this I did have in my pantry from the last time that I did all of my spices. Um, like this whole box here and I've got some big bulk products. So behold, excess. And then in here, this are my spices. So um, just as like a preamble that I should have done before, I have not cleaned this drawer since I made like the mason jars of spices. So it's a little dirty, it's a little dusty. They're out of order. They were at one point alphabetized. They are no longer in order, um, which is actually something I'm gonna change, but I'll talk about that later. So yes, it's a disaster in here, but that's also kind of my life. Spice drawer. So, looks like we're missing some jars. Looks like we're missing two jars. Are they in the fridge? One is in the fridge. I blame Brad. So here's the, one of them. And then there's another missing. I know that this looks the same, but I have never kept this in here. So it's, this isn't it. So, this is the spice drawer. Um, I made all of these labels with this label maker. It's the Dymo. Oh, it was $9 at Staples. Um, it has paint all over it. <laughs> I'm gonna be pulling all of this out, all of this out. We're gonna go over to the big counter so that we have a little bit more space to spread out and so that I'm not putting baby in the corner. And yes, so that's what we're gonna do. So this is my chaos. Let's just take inventory. Whew. I have been organizing things for years, professionally and personally, and I have had so many clients tell me that when they see the mess, they get this like panicked feeling, this overwhelming sensation of having no idea where to start. And I just want everybody to know, even professional people who have been doing this for years still get that feeling. I just got that feeling. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know where to start. Um, it's normal. The, that's not a problem. It's okay to feel a little overwhelmed and a little panicked before going into an organization mess. You just have to then compartmentalize and just make, make piles. That's my biggest tip. Do one first, you know, chaos, and then organize into little piles, and then go from there. So that's what we're going to do. Put a bunch of my chilies over here, and then we'll put garlic powder and onion powder over here. Onion powder, more chili. 
We'll put all of my Indian and kind of like Persian things, stuff like that. We've got some fenugreek leaves, uh, nigella seeds. We'll put black sesame seeds and white sesame seeds just over there. I'll put the Asian stuff in with kind of this pile. We've got some awesome um, ahi nori for akaki. It's so good. Basically like seaweed with sesame seeds. Zatar can go over here. Lemon zest can stay there. We've got some tikkuns. It's like a southern spice. It's one of Brad's favorite. Put it here. Big old bag of cumin seeds. Big old bag of cumin. Got this massive thing of ground ginger. Do you guys remember that turmeric milk thing that went around for a while? It was so delicious. It was equal parts cinnamon, ginger, and turmeric, and then a thing of honey and some coconut oil, and then you put it in with some milk or whatever. It's really delicious. So <laughs> I have this like massive thing of ginger that's probably going stale. This uh, is a super cool little doodad. It is my camping spices. I put steak spice, cinnamon, garlic powder, chipotle chili flakes, cumin, and chili powder because we'd made burritos. But this is an awesome way to go camping or travel with spices. We've got some Vietnamese cinnamon and some Indonesian cinnamon. Um, warm spices. Some regular ground cinnamon, oregano, I guess I can take this rosemary and create another like poultry pile. Okay, so that's my like bulk piles. Um, I guess I can show you kind of what's in here. These were organized alphabetically. I kind of actively stopped putting them in in the right place and started putting the ones that we used the most like at the front, which makes a lot more sense to me. I also have like slight qualms with this spice drawer it is a lot easier for me to like you know see cardamom pods and know that they are cardamom pods than it is for me to look through these especially if it's not organized alphabetically to look through these and look for the cardamom pods label i had this idea of like what if i turned everything upside down and had jars of upside down spices. Well, but the idea is that I would be able to see everything, right? The issue with this idea is that there are certain things that look very, very similar. The other problem is that these jars would have to be full because it's kind of hard to differentiate what everything is without it being full. You know? Oh, no, no. Oh, you have, oh, don't bring a mouse in the house. No mice in the house. Excuse you. Go outside. Oh my God, don't make me pick it up. Please don't make me pick it up. Go outside. Get it. Take it. No, oh my God. <laughs> Honey, where did it go? What did you do with it? <sighs> Can you please pick it up? Oh my God, she's gonna make me pick it up. <laughs> Here, have your mouse. Not in the house. Um, excuse that interruption. Okay, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, right, turning these over. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is instead of organizing these alphabetically, I think I'm going to organize them pretty similar to the way that I did these piles of bulk spices and organize them by like category. Yeah, I think that that is the current plan. But first, let's take everything out and clean out this drawer. Let's start with our chilies. Move. Did somebody else talk to inanimate objects? Okay, so I guess I'll give you a little tour. One thing I do know I'm going to have to do is swap out some jars and keep some of the jars that I don't use as often in the cabinet. Um, because for example, I've only got four chili jars, but I've got like eight actual chilies. I mean, I've got, in this pile, I've got a lot of dried chilies because I tend to grind them up and use them 
as a chili spice, but I guess I won't be putting them in jars. So I can take all of these. I've got two packs of Chipotle, one pack of Ancho, and then another pack of mystery dry chilies. Awesome. Oops, I've got some Aleppo chilies. Um, and actually I keep these Aleppo chili powder in my, right next to my stove and my like, you know, salted things. And I have some Aleppo in here. Usually I keep Chipotle chili flakes in here, but I ran out, so I put Aleppo in here. But I actually prefer using the Chipotle chili flakes. They are just, they are just better. Aleppo is a lot milder. I have to use a lot more of it to get the flavor that I want. I'm going to be depositing these into an actual jar, and I'm going to fill this up with the Chipotle chili flakes because I definitely would like to reach for them as much as possible. These guys are great, but they're better for. Um, they're better for spicing foods that you're cooking than using as a finishing spice, in my opinion. So I'm just going to make a label for this one. Just do Aleppo. That mouse situation just totally threw me off my groove. I wonder if there's enough room to finish this baggie. I get a lot of my spices from the Silk Road Spice merchant market place here in Inglewood. They also have them at some of the farmers markets here in the city. They are the best. So in this guy, in my little pottery doodad, we're going to put the actual Chipotle chili flakes because holla. Yeah, put that guy over there. So I'm gonna put them back. So, I'm gonna leave this in its little bag because I use this a lot. It's kind of pointless to put it in a jar. So I'll just put that over there in the done pile. It doesn't look like I have any uh, extra chipotle powder. So I'll put that over there, finished. Chili powder. I also don't think I have any extra chili powder. Taheen. If you know, you know. Sumac. I know I don't have any more sumac because this sumac is already pretty stale. And I had found some that was really old in the cupboard. Yeah, it's not awesome. Ooh, I should be making a list of things that I need to restock. Excuse me. Okay. So, we definitely need some more sumac because this is kind of gritty and dry and gross. I will put it aside. I need more tahine. Nah. Chili powder. I do have some chili powder. Call me a liar. No name brand. Wow, there's probably some good faces in this video. Um, sorry if that grossed anyone out, but like, I don't know. Taste your spices. Taste them. Like, actually taste them. I mean, I'll, okay, I'll use a spoon next time for all you folks who are like, ew, she put her finger in the bag and I'll use a spoon next time. But seriously, taste your spices because you can taste when they have gone bad. Like that chili powder, it doesn't expire for a couple months, but it has been opened and used and, you know, I probably bought it six months ago or so. And it tasted bitter which is one indicator that it has gone bad. I've got these really cool little jar, Piri Piri Five Mozambican Seasoning. And it's <coughs> in my lungs. It is made with tiny African bird's eye chilies, lemon and paprika, Portuguese style seasoning. Yum, this is actually really delicious. I'm gonna leave these in their jars. And this is a ghost chili. And then we've got some classic sweet paprika. This is some gochugaru, which I'll definitely put in a jar. Gochugaru is a Korean spice. If you've ever had gochujang, it's very similar, but it's um, the like powdered version where gochujang is a paste. Swoosh it down. Awesome. So there's my chilies. 
The next one we'll do, I guess, are like the poultry slash like classic spices. We've got basil, dill, sage, rosemary, oregano, fennel, and bay leaves. Bay leaves is a great example of a spice that very typically gets left in your cupboard a lot longer than it should be. I know that this dill is actually dried dill from a friend's garden from last year. I wonder how it is. Yeah. That's it is entirely flavorless. Oregano. Oregano is another spice I don't love. I'll make this story quick. But the reason that I don't love oregano is because when my mom was pregnant with me, she and my dad were in Mexico and they needed a ride somewhere to a town and it was raining heavily and she was like extremely pregnant. And the truck that picked her up um, was an oregano truck. They had a tarp over the oregano and it was raining and she had to sit in the back with the oregano. It was just so pungent that she could not stand the smell or the taste of oregano after that. And oddly enough, the same thing has happened to me. I like oregano in like small doses in Italian sauces and stuff like that, but I don't like things heavily spiced with oregano. It, it just, I don't know, it just is like not good. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> That's a fun little story. Sage. Uh, this sage is also fresh sage that I dried and I have actually a lot of sage in my garden that I wasn't sure what to do with. I should just dry it. Stay tuned for drying all of my sage and thyme that I have in the garden. Mm. So we'll leave those there. Basil. Rosemary is pretty full here. I do have another container, but I don't need it. Let's do warm spices. We've got ginger. It is full. Cloves, full. Cinnamon. Nutmeg is full. Allspice is pretty full. Cardamom pods could be filled. Coriander could be filled. And I've got another Saigon cinnamon, which is pretty full. I think that this just regular pre-packed ground cinnamon, I'm not even going to bother tasting. I'm fairly certain it's going to be stale, especially in comparison to these um, Silk Road cinnamons. Seriously though, if you haven't ever had like really, really rich, good, fresh cinnamon, highly recommend it. There's just a depth of flavor there that you can't get in like the pre-packed stuff at stores. Best thing to put in your coffee. This one's our favorite cinnamon. It's an Indonesian cinnamon. It's kind of in the middle between being super spicy cinnamon and being too mild. It's kind of the perfect just all around snickerdoodle cinnamon. And cardamom pods. It doesn't look like I have any more cardamom pods either. I love cardamom pods. They're going on the list. Coriander. I don't use coriander super often. I prefer fresh cilantro. Um, but it is really good in Indian dishes. I've got some Raz Al Hanout here. Oh, so good. I don't have backup, it's already full, that's fine. Curry is fine, the turmeric is fine. I could refill the cumin, and the cumin seeds are fine. So those are the, the jars, but We've also got fenugreek leaves, nigella seeds, za'atar. Here's a jar of sesame seeds that I feared I'd fill up while we're at it. We've got some nigella seeds, which are awesome. They're little like black, um, they're little black bitter pods. I know that doesn't sound great, but they're really good. It's like a finishing touch on like uh, confit vegetables or salads and salad dressings. They're just a really nice finishing spice. Awesome. Um, I'm almost out of this stuff. Make a note. And we've got some za'atar here, which is also really, really incredible. 
Spice Blend. Highly recommend it. It's an awesome um, Iranian, I believe, Spice Blend. It's awesome. Zatar! So we've got onion salt, garlic, mustard, and mustard seeds. Mustard and mustard seeds are pretty full. Garlic powder could be refilled. Onion salt is pretty full. So we've got some roasted garlic and red pepper spice blend. I don't think I have any more of this. I guess the easiest way to do this would be to see what do I have more of. Got some more tacoon, we've got more Cajun. And it looks like that's it. So Cajun is fine, don't need to refill it. And I don't have a tikkun jar. Let's make a tikkun jar. This is a really awesome all-purpose seasoning salt though. I highly recommend if you know anyone who's going into the south, pick some up. It has salt, garlic, red pepper, and black pepper. Wow, that's incredibly simple. I'm gonna do a taste test, a comparison between this and seasoning salt. Because I'm pretty sure seasoning salt is just like pepper, salt, chili powder, something like that. First we'll try the tikkuns. Very good. It's kind of, um, got a peppery kick at the end. Very salty. Obviously these are seasoning salts. Kind of smoky. Woo. Okay so first of all seasoning salt is a way saltier. It's also like that iodized salt like you can kind of taste that mineraliness to it. It does have a hint of I think it is chili powder also. They're very similar. Way, way more similar than I was expecting, but I do think the tacoons is better. I'll keep the seasoning salt, but I might put this one in the cupboard because I'd rather reach for the tikkun. Tikkuns. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. This is a an awesome chili lime seasoning blend. It is really good on fish. A roasted garlic pepper blend, a Jamaican jerk. I got these two from my brother. He sent them to me in a, in a box. It's a Jamaican jerk spice blend and a Creole spice blend and we use both of them a lot and we use them pretty interchangeably. Okay, I think that that is about it. So I'm going to clean up these bulk pieces, bulk items, and then let's figure out how to organize this in the drawer. What I'm going to do is make, I think I'm going to make this corner chilies. This corner, things I use often. So, we'll just start, put them in, put them in, 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 in there. Tahine, of course, cayenne. So, following those, I use Zatar a lot. I use, use the everything blend garlic. Tikkuns near the beginning. I do like having the cardamom pods at the front. That's where they were before. Um, and maybe the nigella seeds at the front. Cause they're really, really good for making a dish look more put together than it actually is. After this, I think I'll do warm spices, Indian, Korean, etc. And then blends and miscellaneous, any kind of order, because clearly that just wasn't working for me. Okay. So we're gonna put fruit sugar in the cabinet. I really like these two in here. It's the barbecue blend and a ginger sesame blend. So the things in here, I think I'm going to take out the onion salt 
because I would rather use onion powder. Ooh, I should take out the fennel. Where's the fennel? There's the fennel. I'm never gonna use this. I mean, I will, but just not in my like everyday seasoning. So we can put, we'll put sage there. Sumac, there. There we go. Perfect. Well, there you have it then. A beautifully organized spice drawer. Let's be real, when it comes to cooking, there is nothing like having an organized, even if it's just organized to you, spice drawer. And you know you kind of learn as you go. I did this a few months ago. I had it all alphabetical. It did not work for me. These jars may still not work for me. We'll see. I will keep you guys informed on if I change up my spice drawer situation, but for now I think that this is awesome. One day I will show you everything that is in here. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching this uh, organization decluttering tour. You guys seem to really like the one about my cookbooks. So I hope that you liked this one as well. Yeah, if you guys like these productive organization cleaning videos, let me know. I've got a bunch of other ideas of ones that I could do. Comment down below what your favorite spice is and how you like to use it, or comment if there was a spice here that was in my array of spices that you are unfamiliar with, and I'll let you know how to use it, and what its flavor profile is, and where it's from, and all of that fun stuff. I hope that the biggest takeaway that you take from this video is, um, well, two things. First, organizing is good for the soul. And it can be overwhelming and it can seem a little bit daunting at first, but just break it down into small portions and then just kind of go from there. You don't have to tackle everything at once and it doesn't matter where you start. There are no wrong or right answers when it comes to how you organize. Just find a method that works for you. And the other is taste your spices. Taste them all. It's the best way to learn how to use them. Bloom them in a little bit of hot oil until you can like really smell the spices in the oil and then let it cool and taste it because that's probably what it will taste like once it's been cooked. Taste your spices. If nothing else, it'll let you know when they're going bad, when they're becoming bitter or stale or dusty or dry or just flavorless. So it's important to swap out your spices. Buy bulk, buy small, buy local. Spices are the foundation of cooking. If you don't have a, a, an interesting array of spices, there's no way for you to cook an interesting array of food. Hit subscribe if you're new here, click that bell notification, it lets you know when I post a new video, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, bye! Ooh, some Jamaica. Ooh, that is stale. Oh! Jamaica flowers should not crunch. Also, in case you were wondering, it is citrus. Little oranges, some limes, lemons. It is an awesome shirt. <laughs>